I'm afraid my analysis uh, of the situation uh, may not be in accord with my uh, chair of the committee, uh, so I hope you will take it in good part. Um, can I thank the Leader of the House for a statement today updating the Chamber on digital connectivity in Wales? Firstly, I would like to congratulate the Welsh Government on the excellent progress made so far through their Superfast Cymru programme, especially given Wales topography and popular population distribution. We all acknowledge the challenges this brought to the implementation of the Government's ambitions. Uh, since the summer of 2013, Superfast Cymru, in partnership with BT, rolled out, uh, rolled out plans to provide Superfast broadband to 655,000 premises, uh, with the demand significantly increasing in the following years. Uh, the pledge to provide access to a further 40,000 properties in 2014 certainly enlarged Superfast Cymru's target. Uh, we must all recognise managing the ever-changing demand for access speeds of uh, 30 Mbps or more is certainly an unenviable task, particularly in some of Wales' most remote can, can, communities. I do believe, however, that the Welsh Government must set targets that are ambitious but achievable because access to superfast broadband has swiftly become a fundamental necessity of day-to-day -day life in the 21st century. It is frustrating enough for households who lack sufficient access, but for small businesses desperately trying to modernise and succeed in rural Wales, access to superfast broadband can often be the difference between success and failure. The UK Government's own minimum acceptable download level is 10 MPPS, but still many people in rural Wales suffer average speeds of less than half that. For instance, it was reported last year that in Carmarthen, East uh, and Dinevor, Montgomeryshire, Ceredigion and Dwyfor Merianis, over 50% of broadband connections were slower than 10 MBPS. Could the First Minister update us on whether this is still the case? Uh, following on for some comments uh, made by uh, Adam Price, I would like to ask the Leader of the House what measures have the Welsh Government put in place to ensure a greater level of communication with those communities that are still failing to receive satisfactory broadband access fees? And is there still some confusion with regard to whether connectivity has been achieved or not, as in the case of Llangeny Village in Brecon and Radnishire, which formed the basis for a petition to the Petitions Committee, uh, is the First Minister satisfied that these issues have been addressed? I note that Access Broad Cymru has played a vital role to provide broadband to communities that have failed to receive sufficient access, and I therefore welcome the announcement in today's statement that the scheme, along with Ultrafast Connectivity Scheme, will continue for the foreseeable future. Uh, we look forward to hearing from the Minister, the, uh, sorry, uh, from <laughs> the uh, First Minister, her plans and the partnership that she envisages will uh, bring superfast coverage to the remaining 4% in Wales. Uh, turning to another vital component in the communications rollout, I welcome the fact that the Welsh Government appear to be heeding the recommendations of the Economy, Infrastructure and Skills Committee's report on digital infrastructure in Wales by un undertaking a call to evidence exercise on the benefits of introducing non-domestic rate relief for new mobile mass. And finally, does the Leader of the House not agree with me that the Government must use whatever leverage it has to encourage mobile operating companies to share their infrastructure in order to provide improved mobile coverage in, many black, in the many black spots areas. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, I'd just like to point out I'm not the First Minister. I do sometimes stand in for the First Minister, but on this occasion I'm just being myself. So, um, uh, no, no, no worries. Uh, it's just causing um, other members to grin, I think. Um, so, uh, a, a number of issues there. So, um, the way that the, the original scheme worked was that we didn't specify any premises at all and uh, BT just had all premises in Wales to choose from and they went to, obviously they went to the ones that were the cheapest and the fastest and the, and the closest together because that's their best commercial advantage. Um, however, I just want to put to bed once and for all the myth that this is not a rural scheme. This is a market intervention. 
We are not allowed to go with it where any commercial operator goes, and therefore there is no superfast Gumry in any city or conurbation or large development because obviously that's where the commercial rollout has happened. So in my own constituency, there's no superfast Gumry, and I can assure you I have people who haven't got broadband, but I'm not able to go there uh, and intervene on their behalf, which is some uh, frustration. But we have learned from um, some of the issues that we had around the, the comms, as I've said in, in response to a number of members around the chamber. So in the new schemes that we're putting out, um, once the proposals come back, we have asked for specific premises. So the new, uh, the new procurements will be on the basis of specific premises and specific costs. And we will be able to tell people immediately whether they're in or out. Um, and the ones who are out, we will be able to work with proactively to get them involved in the community schemes and the voucher schemes, and the ones who are in will be able to keep them informed on a personal basis about where they are and any engineering problems, et cetera, et cetera, that arise. So we've learnt the, the lesson of the comms, um, and I like to think that going forward, uh, we won't have that problem. We do know um, within most parameters who is connected, and there is an interactive map on the Welsh Government site that tells you if you're a white premises or not. There are small tweaks with that. As I said, as I go around the country, I've found, we've found some issues with it, but they're very small. So what, by and large, the map is, is accurate. And I would urge members who, who do find any accuracy on the map to tell me about it, because we are, are working very hard to make sure that that's uh, as accurate as it's possible uh, to make it. Um, we did include nearly 2,000 additional um, business premises uh, through the airband contract as well. So that's an additional contract we put in specifically to cover off business premises because in the initial uh, open market review, a lot of business premises were covered by the commercial companies and then it became increasingly obvious that they weren't going to be covered. So we did push, put an additional contract in for that specifically and, the, and that contract is now complete and, and running. Um, and then, then the lastly, in terms of the, um, the shared infrastructure and mobile masters, as I said in response to Russell George, um, my frustration is that it seems obvious to me that we're not going to have a full commercial market in rural parts of Wales. We'd be lucky if we get a single operator. So the idea that we don't allow roaming, never mind shared infrastructure, is a, a matter of a huge frustration to me. I just don't see how you can run a tourist business by saying, come to Wales as long as you're connected to this one operator. I mean, clearly that doesn't work. And if you have a continental sim, you're lucky enough to have one of those, it happily roams around and, and finds you the operator. So I, I continue to press Ofcom and the UK government very forcibly to allow that in rural and very rural parts where there clearly isn't competition for those <coughs> services.